Statistics plays a very important role in the activities related to our everyday life such as to obtain various information concerning jobs, business, marketing, imports, exports, education, etc. In every sphere of life, statistics is used in one form or the other. All researches and investigations require the use of statistics. Statistics is the process of drawing facts from the numerical data. It includes the collection of data, presentation of data, and interpretation of data. In this chapter, we will study the following concepts. Data handling, probability. Collection of data. We collect information in the form of data. We can collect the information through various sources like friends, families, communities, schools, newspapers, books, magazines, websites, etc. Collecting data. When a statistical investigation is to be conducted, there is always a target population about which information is required. The population might be the entire population of a country, all the students at a school, an entire animal species, or the items produced by a machine. One of the first decisions to be made in statistical inquiry is from whom or what we will collect data. We can collect data using either a census or a survey. A census involves collecting data about every individual in the whole population. The individuals may be people or objects. A census is detailed and accurate, but is expensive, time-consuming and often impractical. A survey involves collecting data about a part of the population called a sample only. A survey is cheaper and quicker than a census, but is not as detailed or as accurate. Conclusions drawn from surveys usually involve some errors. When we gather information by conducting a survey, we need a questionnaire. A questionnaire is made up of questions related to the issue on which we want to collect information. There are two types of questions in the questionnaire. Close-ended and open-ended. Close-ended. When the question is ended with the choices as a two-way choice, yes or no, or multiple choices are given to answer the question. Open-ended. Questions can also be open. This type of questions give respondent a chance to explain their answers. Essentials for good questionnaires. The number of questions should be kept minimum. Questions should be simple, short and easy to understand. Questions should be relevant to the investigation. Organize data. When an investigator collects data for an investigation, it is just raw data. To get some meaningful information out of it, we need to arrange this data. The following information collected from the 30 students of class 7 about the mode of transport they use for coming to school. We can organize this above information by using tallies. Students coming by bus are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 students. Students coming by walking are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 students. Students coming by bicycle are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 students. Students coming with parents are 1, 2, 3. 3 students. Range. The difference between largest and smallest observation in a data set is called the range of data. Hence, range is equal to highest observation minus lowest observation. For example, students of grade 7 got the following marks in an examination. Here, the highest mark obtained is 256 and the lowest mark obtained is 236. Therefore, the range is equal 
to 256 minus 236 is equal to 20. Frequency of an observation. The number of times a particular observation occurs is known as its frequency. Frequency distribution. From the supposed example given in the introductory part, we observe that 28 occurs once, 31 occurs twice, 32 occurs once, 33 occurs once, 41 occurs once, 74 occurs two times, 53 occurs five times, 56 occurs four times, 61 occurs two times, 64 occurs three times, 70 occurs two times, and 88 occurs once. Thus, we say that the frequency of 28, 32, 33, 41, 88 is 1. The frequency of 31, 61, 70, 74 is 2. The frequency of 64 is 3. The frequency of 56 is 4. And the frequency of 53 is 5. Grouping data in class intervals. Let's consider the marks of the 30 students in mathematics. We will group them into class intervals. Divide the data into groups of 10. Follow the steps below to represent the data in a group table. Step 1. Find out the range of data. That is, 49 minus 5 is equal to 44. Step 2. Divide the range by the interval of the group as it is given as 10 to decide the number of groups we formed. Number of groups is equal to 44 divided by 10 is equal to 5 approximately. Step 3. Now organize the data into groups using telemarks. Draw a table. The first column contains marks of students in class interval, that is 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, and 41 to 50. The second column contains tally marks. The third column contains the number of students, also called frequency. Now fill the table. Look at the marks of the students. Here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Five students have marks less than 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Six students have marks in between 11 and 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Seven students have marks in between 21 and 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Six students have marks in between 31 and 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Six students have marks in between 41 and 50. Hence, we have arranged data into class intervals. Summarizing data. In order to explain the data in brief, we need to summarize the data. We can summarize the data by finding the central tendency, or middle value of data. Types of central tendency. Mean, median, mode. Mean of ungrouped data. The mean of the given observation is defined as mean is equal to the sum of all the observations upon number of observations. For example, find the mean marks of the 10 students given below. Solution. Sum of marks is equal to 40 plus 30 plus 32 plus 14 plus 16 plus 28 plus 12 plus 18 plus 25 plus 35 is equal to 250. Number of students is equal to 10. Mean is equal to the sum of the given observations upon number of the given students is equal to 250 
upon ten is equal to twenty-five. Mean. Consider a situation. A lift in a mall can take up to six hundred kilograms of weight in one trip. Nine people aboard the lift, but it shows the total weight is six hundred and thirty kilograms, and refuses to move due to overload. Now consider all the nine persons are of the same weight. Then can you find the weight of one person? Six thirty divided by nine is equal to seventy kilograms. Hence, the weight of one person is equal to seventy kilograms. What if weight of all of them is different? Say, sixty, eighty, seventy-five, sixty-five, ninety, fifty-five, fifty, eighty-five, and seventy. The total of all these weights is six hundred and thirty kilograms. But as we are not aware of the weight of any individual, so we can take the average to assume their weight. And the average of all these weights is seventy. This is called the mean weight. To calculate the mean, we use the sum of all observations divided by the number of observations. Median. Median is the value which divides the data into two halves, such that half of the observation is above it. And the other half is below it. Method for finding the median of an ungrouped data: arrange the data in ascending or descending order. Let the total number of observations be n. Case one: when n is odd, median will be n plus one upon twoth term. Case two: when n is even, the median will be the mean of N upon twoth term and N upon two plus oneth term. Mode, mode is the value which occurs most frequently in a set of observations and around which the other items of the set cluster densely. Thus, the mode of a frequency distribution is that value of the variable which has maximum frequency. In order to calculate the mode of an ungrouped data, we may use the following steps. Step one: obtain the set of observations and arrange it in an ascending or descending order. Step two: count the number of times the values repeat themselves. Step three: find the value which occurs the maximum number of times. That is, obtain the value. Which has the maximum frequency. This value is the mode. For example, find the mode of the given data: fourteen, twenty-five, fourteen, twenty-eight, eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, fourteen, twenty-three, twenty-two, fourteen, eighteen. Solution: Arranging the data in ascending order, we get. Fourteen, 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 seventeen, eighteen, 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 twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-five, and twenty-eight. As fourteen occurs maximum number of times, so mode is equal to fourteen. Representing data. 
We can represent data by the following means. Bar graph, double bar graph, histograms, pie charts, representation of a bar graph. Let us consider a bar graph representing data of favorite type of music. A bar graph is a chart with rectangular bars with lengths proportional to the values they represent. The information in a bar graph is represented by bars of the same width. The bars may be drawn vertically or horizontally. The distance between the consecutive bars and width of the bar graph is significant. The distance between two consecutive bars should be uniform. In the shown example of bar graph, we see that this is called the title of a graph. These are the frequencies of each category. Categories of data. The height of bar indicates the frequency of each category. Points to remember while drawing a bar graph. It should be clearly mentioned below or above the bar graph what it represents. Labels written along the horizontal axis can also be written inside the bar or at the top of the bars. Many conclusions can be drawn from a given bar graph by just looking at it. The following table shows the favorite outdoor games of the students of grade 7. Let's represent the above data with the help of a bar graph. Draw two lines perpendicular to each other on a grid paper and call them horizontal and vertical axis. Along the horizontal axis, mark the outdoor games and along the vertical axis, mark the number of students. Now, we draw various bars according to the given data. The favorite game of 30 students is rugby, so draw a rectangular bar up to 30. The favorite game of 15 students is cricket, so draw a rectangular bar up to 15. The favorite game of 20 students is tennis, so draw a rectangular bar up to 20. The favorite game of 20 students is basketball, so draw a rectangular bar up to 20. The favorite game of 40 students is football, so draw a rectangular bar up to 40. Thus, this bar graph represents the favorite outdoor games of the students of grade 7. Double bar graphs Double bar graphs are used for comparing two or more sets of data. For example, the following data represents sex-wise enrollment of students during 2011 to 2014. Let's represent the following data with the help of a double bar graph. Draw two lines perpendicular to each other on a grid paper and call them horizontal and vertical axis. Along the horizontal axis, mark the years, and along the vertical axis, mark the number of students. We use blue colors for boys and pink color for girls. In the year 2011, 700 boys and 300 girls were enrolled. So draw a rectangular bar up to 700 of blue and 300 of pink color as shown. In the year 2012, 900 boys and 600 girls were enrolled. So draw a rectangular bar up to 900 of blue and 600 of pink color as shown. In the year 2013, 1,100 boys and 700 girls were enrolled. So draw rectangular bars up to 1,100 of blue and 700 of pink color as shown. In year 2014, 1,200 boys 
and 700 girls were enrolled. So draw rectangular bars up to 1,200 of blue and 700 of pink color as shown. Hence, this double bar graph represents sex-wise enrollment of students during 2011 to 2014. Bar graph. Look at the following graphs and answer the questions that follow. What does the bar graph represent? The bar graph represents the different activities preferred by the grade 7 students. The horizontal axis represents the activities preferred by the students. The vertical axis represents the number of students. Which activity has been the least preferred? Art and craft has been the least preferred. How many students preferred listening to music? 400 students preferred listening to music. How many students preferred painting? 500 students preferred painting. Which activity has been the most preferred? Dancing has been the most preferred. Double bar graph. The following graph shows the percentage of the student's gender with respect to their grades. Answer the questions that follow. Which grade has the lowest percentage of females? Grade 4 has the lowest percentage of females. Which grade has the lowest percentage of males? Grade 11 has the lowest percentage of males. Which grade has the highest percentage of females? Grade 12 has the highest percentage of females. Which grade has the highest percentage of males? Grade 4 has the highest percentage of males. The double bar graph shows that the percentage the learners gender in the different grades. The number of male learners seems to decrease in the higher grade.